If you look at the world today, there is just conflict everywhere. We have wars going on, political turmoil, financial disturbances, and generally just this sense of unrest and uncertainty is everywhere. And really the common thing that sort of ties all of them together is just this general sense of misinformation everywhere. A lot of it being inadvertently actually pushed out by the parties responsible for the conflicts that we're experiencing as a means to legitimize what's going on. And it is rather shocking that for many of us, a lot of the information that we've seen, this misinformation, we know them to be blatantly untrue. Yet supporters and a lot of people generally, they do actually buy into them and they do believe them. And it just makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Have people lost their minds? Do they not see the truth? It makes us really upset. We want to wake them up and open their eyes to what's actually happening. But it just seems so difficult. Can't they see the truth? But that really brings us to the question of tonight. What exactly is the truth? And what is so interesting is, as I was thinking about this topic, I was thinking back to the work of Friedrich Nietzsche, this late 19th century German philosopher, who actually predicted this current age we're living in, this age of post-truth. You see, when we think about the truth, we tend to have this very straightforward concept. Something is either true or untrue. And of course, the truth must exist out there in the world. Things must be true. It's just a matter of whether we discover them or not. There must be some answer of the truth. But Nietzsche actually challenged that in his philosophy. He believed that the objective truth that we're so familiar with, that we're naturally inclined towards, doesn't actually exist. Philosophers and really society in general, we believe that objective truth exists, but Nietzsche challenged that outright. And for Nietzsche, it was very interesting. The idea of an objective truth was really tied to the period of the Enlightenment, where we see this very fixed order that existed in the world. And really underlying all that was this belief in God. But Nietzsche being the philosopher that challenged that thought, who believed in his philosophy that God is dead, and God being the foundation of what counted as the objective truths of the world, being dead to him meant that objective truth is an impossibility. It doesn't actually exist. And Nietzsche actually preached something else, this view known as perspectivism. Rather than there being objective truths in the world, what we have instead in reality is a conflict of perspectives. Now at this point, you might be wondering, this sounds preposterous. Melvin, of course, certain things are true. For example, we know that the capital of France is Paris. We know that at this very moment, I'm just sharing some thoughts with you tonight. We know a cat is a cat and a dog is a dog. So certainly those are objectively true. Well, Nietzsche would say that that is really not a matter of objectivity, rather that it is true to most of us because most of us agree that to be true. Most of us share similar perspectives in regarding those things as being true. And in many ways, they are very simple matters. We agree altogether those things are true. But in some more complicated areas, for example, morality, politics, the world, and really all of its mysteries and infinitudes of possibilities in areas that are much more complex, our perspectives may differ. And that's really what we're seeing happening in the world, at least through the philosophy of Friedrich Nietzsche. There is a battle of perspectives. And if only things were so clear, so objectively true, we would all agree on everything. Yet the truth of the world is actually run by perspectivism. And the very interesting thing about perspectivism, perspectivism is largely driven by personal bias, interests, desires, and really the underpinnings of a person. So we might all agree to different things based on how we really are like. Yet when we do find our camp's perspectives, according to Nietzsche, we tend to really buy into those perspectives. And so what we see, especially if you think about recent political turmoil, and even the war that's going on recently, is that people who actually believe certain perspectives, they truly believe in it. You might give them all this evidence to show them otherwise, right in their faces, they wouldn't regard it as so. They rather throw aside those evidence and stick to their perspectives because for these matters, they are non-negotiable truths. They're totally embedded in their perspectivism. And so this is very contrary to the ideas of the Enlightenment that we would discover the truth through rationality, reasoning, some shared collective human faculty that we all have together. The truth is, the truth is, we're all very individualized and the way we think is very different. We have different perspectives and perspectivism shapes the way we see the world, shapes the truths that really govern our lives. And despite writing this in the late 19th century, this is never more evident than today. We see it every single day in politics, in finance, in absolutely everything.
And I know this sounds very concerning and perhaps even quite defeatist. You're probably wondering: Am I suggesting that now that we live in this post-truth era, which is of course definitely exaggerated and exacerbated by social media, does it actually mean that we have no more hope? Well, not exactly, because Nietzsche actually suggested in his 1887 text on the genealogy of morality, he actually suggested that if we realize that. Objective truth doesn't actually govern the world. Rather, perspectivism. Rather than feel defeated and feel like that's there's no more hope for society, we should instead embrace it. Embrace the flaws of our humanity. This perspectivist way of seeing the world. In other words, you and I we might share different perspectives, but realizing that is key. Realizing that our perspectives shape the truths that we see in the world. Realizing that is the starting point because then. We could and we should depart from that. We should try and expand our perspectives as much as possible, and consider all the perspectives that exist in the world, rather than be so alienated and isolated in our own. And perhaps by doing so, we can actually get closer, a watered-down version of an objective truth, if it actually existed, philosophically speaking. And I think now. More than ever, this is so important. I've talked about this in one of my recent、uh, TED Talk videos. But the fact is, it is so easy to be so comfortable, and in fact, even encouraged by the very curative experience that we have online in the world, where everything is recommended to us based on our profile. It is very easy for us to be so ingrained in our own perspective. But now, more than ever, as misinformation is rampant because of technology and society, and there's so much extremism, it is time we realize this and broaden our own perspective. As we truly try and challenge what we consider are the truths in our world, and bring ourselves closer to what the truth really is.